What day is it today? Wednesday? Thursday? Tuesday. Tuesday. We've got a new video going live in like 20 minutes. Let's go. Had some drama unfold yesterday. I was integrating Slack. Maddie went out, integrating Slack, and I'm like, you know what, this is gonna be a breeze. We've already done the OAuth to connect Slack to the platform. We've already done all the access tokens. We've saved them, we've hashed them, we've made it all work. Now all we gotta do is just invite the user to the Slack workspace by doing some sort of OAuth, which I've seen people do with Slack before. So I was like, good, all good. We'll just get this done. In like 20 minutes, I spun up an OAuth flow. After a couple of hours of debugging it, realized, actually, no, you cannot do an OAuth flow the same with Slack that you would do with discord or anything else that's because slack either one requires you to be on an enterprise plan which is like eight dollars or twelve dollars us per user imagine if you got like twelve thousand people in a slack community that's just ridiculous and then the second point as well is that their oauth flows aren't quite the same as like the way discord does it either so yeah i've had to figure out a bit of an intermediate solution of how we're actually going to make it work it's a little bit different pretty cool though it actually uses like an OTP. You know what, I'll just like walk you through it later. But I had to figure that out and today I'm gonna finish up some work on that. Otherwise, we're gonna get some coffee first of all. Ooh, and I've got like four creator meetings today, some big ones as well. So yeah, we're gonna get into that too. All right, flat whites. Back to the den. Okay, so priority today. The main one is we need to onboard these new creators who are coming onto Discord. And then I've also got some other meetings where we're gonna talk about new integrations that they want. I emailed people last week saying Slack's gonna be ready by like the end of this week, so I gotta get it done. Okay, I actually need to go over whiteboard with this because this is wild. This is a classic thing in software engineering where you think you've got it down and so you like just start building it and then you realize very fast you do not have it down. And it's okay because as overwhelmed as I was, I realized there probably is a solution. I just got to figure it out. So here we go. This is how I thought Slack would work. The user will click the link, come to my landing page or my web app with some sort of token that's also part of that request. And then what's gonna happen here is we're gonna do some sort of check to see are they allowed to do it? And if so, we're gonna redirect them to an OAuth flow. This is a very straightforward kind of process, but it just means that we can be in control of the user. We can understand whether they're allowed to do whatever they're trying to do and OAuth and connect to Slack. And if so, yes, we'll give them to the OAuth and that's gonna redirect them back, give them some sort of access and we'll throw them directly into the Slack. That all sounds great, right? And this is a flow that we use in Discord. It's a flow that we're gonna use in Telegram. It's a flow that we're gonna use everywhere else. And so you'd think, cool, let's just do that. Let's just build that right now. But no, Slack is very funny when it comes to users on their platform. So with Slack, you've got free workspaces and then you've got paid workspaces. And in most cases, the paid workspaces are either going to be for some sort of company or startup or someone where each user is paying eight to $12 US per user for access to that Slack workspace, which is ridiculous. And so we now have a problem where certain features and very very specifically, features that I need on the API, such as admin invite users or admin accept permissions or whatever those admin endpoints are, are only available to enterprise plans. So what that means is I cannot generate invite links. It means I cannot programmatically invite users. It means I can not programmatically accept invitations to the Slack workspace. I'm screwed, right? Doesn't make sense. So how am I supposed to get people into a Slack workspace that we've already authenticated? Hmm. I've got to have my own solution. And this is what it is. And I've got it 95% working so far. I just haven't actually, wait, what was the part that I haven't done? I just haven't tested it on iOS. I've tested it on web and everything and it works great. So this is my flow, my custom flow. What's gonna happen is when a user subscribes and they pay money, we're gonna send an email to them that contains a public Slack invitation link. Now the way that public Slack invitation links work is the user who actually connects their Slack in the first place to sub will need to copy that link with no expiration. And then those links have a maximum 400 invites on them, which is another problem that we have to consider, which is so, so dumb on Slack's part, but I do understand they're trying to get people to upgrade to enterprise. So now we've got a public invite link, public. It's got maximum 400 invites that can be added. And so now you're probably thinking, that doesn't make sense. People are going to accept that link. They're going to be thrown into the Slack, but they haven't even paid. What if I share the link with my friends? Exactly. My workaround, and this is just, this is all currently a plan in progress, is when a user subscribes, they'll get the link, they'll jump into the free Slack workspace, which is going to have one channel, which is literally just a welcome channel. 
Now this welcome channel is the only thing they're gonna be able to see because all other channels will be private. A user subscribes, they're gonna be sent the free Slack workspace invitation, which anyone can access by the way. It's gonna throw them into the Slack and there's only gonna be one channel available. You could send this invite link to all your friends. Once again, importantly, another thing to consider, there's only 400 maximum invites on that. Now they're inside the Slack, there's one channel and inside here, there is going to be a verify button. Now this verify button, if you click it, it's going to redirect you to a custom page that is for Slack OAuth verification. And what's gonna happen here, there is going to be a page that has a four digit code or a five digit code and you're going to enter this special code. Now, where do you get this code from? It would have been in the original email that I sent when you first subscribed. So there'll be a four digit code, you enter that in here and if it is successful, it's then going to load and it's going to throw you back a Slack OAuth URL. And right there, it's going to be up to you as the user to click confirm and authorize. And so essentially what that's gonna do, once you authorize, then it's gonna redirect you back to another page that I have, and it's going to take that code, it's gonna take that state, and send it back up to my backend, and now we can log on the backend who the user is. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Anyway, let me show you an actual working demo. Okay, so we have a test community right here. We're gonna go subscribe. We are currently on my local host. We'll type an email in, we'll type a test credit card, type a test postcode and subscribe. Okay, cool. By the way, this is the sub flow if you guys haven't seen it. Anytime you sign up to Slub, create a sub, this is what it looks like. And look at that, boom, we are in. So if we go check our emails, we should now have, there we go, you are in. Jacob's community on Slack. And as you can see, have a look at that. Your verification code is 7IES. So what this means is a user can use this code inside that Slack OTP flow to authorize and actually verify themselves into the Slack server. And based on if it verifies and they are all good to go, my Slack bot inside that Slack workspace is then going to assign that user to all of the private channels. That's the flow. So let's do that right now. First, we'll click here to join, and this is the public link. So we can open Slack, and you can see that we are inside the Slack, and there is currently one channel, which you can see is welcome. Now, there are actually more channels in the Slack. They are all private, but there is one link right here, which I'm going to click, and currently, very, very ugly design, but we currently just have a input box of four digits. And so what we're gonna do, we'll jump back, 79ES, so we'll go, 79ES. Okay, so as you can see, we've actually already authorized with Slack, so that's why it did a fast redirect just then. But this is what you would see if all went well. And right away, my bot would throw you into the Slack. You're already inside the Slack, but it would assign you those premium private channels. So yeah, that's the flow. So essentially the last thing that I need to do now at this point is tie up that last little point when the user OAuth authorizes. It goes, yep, you're good to go. And have my bot automatically assign access to those private channels. Now, there's a cool thing as well, where we don't necessarily need to assign users to all the private channels, because look, there could be like 50, and they could add them, yes, inside sub, and we can say, yes, add them all to these channels, but we can actually just add them to a few, and maybe there's like an announcements channel, or a general channel, like all sorts of just like main channels, and based on that, we can actually build custom automations that when a user clicks, join this channel, it's then going to throw them into a new private channel. And there's actually a ton of third-party bots out there that can do this. The main thing is that if someone unsubscribes or their subscription cancels, that we wanna remove them from every single channel except the welcome channel. So yeah, that's another thing to figure out. It's currently Tuesday. I've said it's gonna be live by next week. So yeah, we have got not a lot of time, but that's okay, we're gonna make it work. 8.25, new video's just gone out. Dev Club is going wild. And uh, yeah, if you're not already in the dev club, this is actually becoming one of the coolest places. Very, very much so to hang out like this. Everyone just going wild all day, all night. If you're not already in the dev club, oh, let me give you a quick demo. Well, first of all, we've got one big general channel, which is lit literally just essentially, oh look, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we've got someone watching the latest video. But other than that, we've actually got quite a few channels of all sorts of different topics. As you can see, we've got general code help, what I'm working on, build ideas, setup, wins, all sorts of different things, running, accountability. Let's go into what I'm working on. Let's see what's going on right here. See, there's a ton of things that different people are working on. We're supporting each other's projects. You can see Ro is launching on Product Hunt today. Let's go. We've even just created a YouTube creators channel. So anyone that's specifically in development and doing like YouTube creation, we're talking all about like 
successful YouTube videos and how to actually make that work. So that's super cool as well. If you're a developer and you're interested in building projects, if you're interested in running, interested in cooking, interested in desk setups, interested in honestly anything to do with the entire development process and actually just like living as a software engineer or someone in tech, definitely check out Jacob's Dev Club, link down below. We'd love to have you in there. I think something that a lot of people don't talk about a lot, especially when it comes to like these beautiful vlogs of day in the life and actually like building stuff is the overwhelm that comes with it. And it's very real for me especially. Um, and I mean, I think over these past three months especially, like Maddie and I have learned really well how to manage stress, anxiety, overwhelm, and actually just like take a second and take a breather and stop doing stuff and then like realize, okay, actually everything's okay, we're healthy, we're good, but doesn't make it easy. And so for example, today, I have a ton of meetings. My calendar is absolutely full. I've got creators coming on board for Discord. I've got creators coming on board next week for Slack. I've got creators coming on board for WhatsApp in like a couple of weeks. I've got so much work to do. I've got so many different things that come up out of nowhere, like bugs and issues and errors. And I've got people subscribing to my dev club and I wanna like give them the best experience. And like when I step outside it for a second, everything is good. But there are definitely times and like, for example, this morning where I woke up and I was just like, man, I am just like, I just don't feel like getting out of bed right now because there's just so much to do. And I know that's just because deep down, if I'm being like authentic to myself, I'm like just feeling a bit like overwhelmed. But actually like if I'm feeling that overwhelmed, it's probably because there's something like really exciting going on, which is we've got a lot of people who are interested. We didn't have anyone interested. I wouldn't feel overwhelmed at all because there'd be no pressure. So it's kind of like a good problem to have, but I think it's also having the ability to acknowledge that is like almost a skill in itself. I wouldn't say I'm like a you know, skillful person in that. But like, you know, it's definitely been something we've been working on and figuring out over the last few months, which has been cool. So yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot to manage. And at times it is like ridiculously overwhelming, but it means that we're onto something. And there's people that want it over the weekend. There's been new people signing up and creating their own subs, which has been super, super cool to see. And for the la like first, you know, week especially or so, it was mainly just me. And now there's new people jumping in. And like, if I open my Stripe, this is really cool. I've literally just got like payments and payments and payments and payments, if it wants to load, of like payments coming through, some of them being my dev club, some of them being other people's subs and like different clubs that they're hosting on Discord right now, which is super cool. And what's really cool as well is every time a payment comes through, sub is making money. We've got fees coming in and technically right now I'm not even paying myself a salary so can we call this a profitable company to any investors watching we are fully profitable right now <laughs> but in reality we are gonna start paying salary soon we actually just signed a document this morning which is another thing these are all these like things that no one tells you about building a startup there are so so many moving parts that you just never consider because you're just like easy. It's literally just building product and talking to customers. But like that is just one side. Then there is like paying yourself, managing the books, managing cash flow, managing runway. Where am I actually assigning cash flow to go? Who am I bringing on the team? Am I actually even hiring anyone? Am I bringing Maddie on? What is Maddie doing? What am I doing? What are we, like where are we overall heading towards? There's so, so many like factors that is just completely non-tech related. And it's funny because this is like a coding vlog, right? And this is like a big like coding series where we go, yeah, we're building all this really exciting tech and yeah, it's like, but the reality is half of my brain most of the time is actually caught up in things that aren't even tech or code related because there is just so, so many things to do. So anyway, it's been great having Maddie on board, helping out with so much of this stuff. Maddie's been negotiating how we're gonna do the salaries uh, when we're not in New York anymore, which we can't reveal yet. That is coming soon. You'll hear about that in a month or so. Overall, if I can say anything, and this actually all came because I did notice a comment that came in this morning from this morning's video, which said, how do you even know what to prioritize or focus on? How do you even manage it all? I think the reality is I don't. You just take it as it comes and you go, okay, what is gonna move the needle right now? Okay, I'm gonna head towards that. And that's kind of how it works. Yeah, I've got meetings this morning. I'm doing my Slack integration right now. I'm slowly making progress and it's just all about making like continuous, minimal, like momentum forward progress.
my gosh. Okay, the flow just got 10 times better. Ignore what I did on the whiteboard this morning, which is still there. <laughs> Probably should have cleaned that. Okay, so hear me out. Before, what we were doing is we're getting a user to join the Slack, and then they would come in, they'd click a verify link, and then that would send them to my OTP with it into their four digit code that was in their email. And then they would get verified from my server. There'd be some like backend logic. I couldn't get it working in the end. Just like all the different pieces moving with Slack and then you'd have to know what channel it is. I've got such a better flow that I've figured out today. So what I've done is I've actually enabled socket mode on Slack, which is this new thing I didn't even realize they do, but obviously makes a lot of sense if you're gonna be implementing slash commands or anything like that. And so what I've done now is when a user installs the bot inside their workspace, so like a workspace owner installs the bot, everyone will have access to do the slash command verify membership. And right there, I've, I, what you just saw was me finally, oh my gosh, finally enabling socket mode. So it's like a secure connection between my backend, specifically just the Slack piece and everyone else's Slack workspaces. So they can slash command, enter like a four or five or six digit code that I'm gonna give them. And then it tells me and my backend everything I need to know about that user what Slack workspace they came from, what their Slack user ID is. And then we can check all the membership info. We've got their email, we've got their name, we've got everything. So like, oh my gosh, stoked. This means that we can just like make the experience so much cooler. There's no like separate OTP flow. It's literally inside Slack. Stoked, so stoked. You know what's really cool? No one else on earth is doing this right now. I'm gonna be the only one. Woo! Oh man, how good is tech? Anyway. Absolutely fizzing. I've got another call with another big YouTube creator in like five minutes, so let's get to that. Feeling good, I'm not gonna lie. I was feeling a little bit worried about the progress we're making. So yeah, good stuff. All right. We in the booth, baby. No one can hear me, you can. <laughs> so tell the people, what's your startup? What are you building? Hey guys, I'm Brandon. I'm building video menus for restaurants and mm -hmm. yeah, I want to make it- Bro's so taking over New York. Yes, I want to make it so that everyone can see what the food actually looks like. Woo! The video. Hell yeah. Yep. Dude, dude just got a, uh, got a contract with like all these restaurants in New York. He's already got like everything booming. <laughs> Wild. Thank you brother, oh. appreciate you. Sick dude, have a good one. You see you later. There's so many different like businesses and like people building stuff that's just so different in here. It's really cool. Check this out. No more going outside of Slack to do any sort of verification. You can do it in-house. Check this out. Verify, verify membership. We'll just do a bogus code. Please for, provide a valid verification code. Well, that's good. Good to see that's working. Verify membership, and we will use the code. We've got one here, 79ES. Submit that. Boom, you've successfully verified your membership to Jacob Tests Community. And then if we just refresh this, claimed by Slack ID, look at that. So now we are attributing the Slack invites to the correct people. So sick. Let's go. Cool.